Hey everyone, I'm going to show how to modify your UI in RPG Builder. So let's say that you're in the main menu, you can either click on the uh, essential button here, or if you change this scene, you just need to go to, um, let me close that, to scenes, and we have a UI scene here. So this scene is not in the build settings, it's not something that's going to be loaded in the build, or uh, it's not a scene that you actually go in with your player or something. But if we do open it, you see that uh, all we have here is a camera, a light, and a uh, prefab here. So this prefab is of course, you know, saved in RPG Builder under the Essentials folders. And this contains a lot of things actually. Uh, that's not for no reason, it's called Essentials, right? This is absolutely uh, mandatory to your game because uh, as you can see here, we have a lot of data stored. This is of course empty because this is populated at runtime. But here, for example, you have your character data class, which is uh, the local um, version of your character data, which is then used to, uh, you know, generate and save and edit and delete and so on your uh, save files for your characters. Then it has a canvas in it, which I'm going to get to in a bit. The event system, you don't really need to care about that. It just needs to be here. And then we have a game manager. And this game manager, as you can see, it also has a lot of um, component on it. and it's of course, you know, many uh, managers split into their own category. So we have things such as combat manager and so on. But this is not really the topic of this video. Um, we will be looking at the canvas here. So the canvas contains the entire game UI. Uh, the entire game UI is under this um, game objects and it is also split in multiple parts. So we have also nested canvas. So here we have one. Uh, we have also one here, one here. And that should be it, I think. Yes, I think that's all for the nested canvas. So um, just a quick note about nested canvas. The reason this is uh, a thing here is because it's actually helping with performances. Um, nested canvas are not rebuilding everything that's above it, meaning that if an element is changing in HUD canvas, it's going to rebuild all of that, but not uh, other elements from the previous canvas or from the um you know parent canvas so uh, definitely something uh, which is a good practice for you to keep doing in the future also anyway here you see that we have a lot of things um if you don't know i'm not going to go through all of those of course because it's really a lot um but if you have any question definitely hit me up by mail or in the discord but mainly the two big things you're going to spend most of your time in are the hud here which is containing a lot of things such as toolbar, uh, action bar, the nameplates here, the experience bar, um, minimap, and so on, and the uh, windows canvas. This is, of course, what's containing, for example, the character panel, and um, all these kind of game windows, uh, inventory, the talent trees, option, merchant panel, and so on. Um, if you're wondering why they're not visible here, it's very simple. For example, if you would want to edit your uh, inventory, you just select it, and you see that you have a canvas group component here. And the alpha is zero, so zero alpha means it's invisible. But if you do make it one, and I usually suggest you to also tick the interactable on, because otherwise your buttons and any interactable um, object is going to be in disabled mode, so it's not going to look the way it's going to look in game. And um, so you just put it to one, you modify it, and you put it back to zero to keep it clean. You don't have to, because it's going to be done uh, when you enter the game for you anyway, if you forget to do it. But I would still suggest you to uh, keep it clean so you don't have to constantly uh, hide many windows or something. You just show the one you need and want to modify. And then when you're done, you just hide it again. Uh, so that's it. For the uh, HUD canvas, it's the same. Uh, but most of those things do not have a canvas group because the HUD is mostly seen all the time. But for example, the quest tracker does because this is not seen at all time. Anyway, um, you see that a lot of those components, when you start clicking on them, have uh, values here, uh, most of which you shouldn't change because these are, for example, references to prefab or things like that. But you also have things such as colors. This you're definitely, uh, of course, free to change them. You can set any color you want. Uh, they have prefab uh, references also. I mean, a lot of things, right? Um, and uh, what's really important is when you're done with this, doesn't matter if you change the UI or if you change something in the game manager or even in those things, but this you shouldn't touch anything. This should stay as is. Both those things actually should never be changed uh, manually. Um, but if, when you're done with it, you simply go um, 
at the parent prefab, so the RPG Builder Essentials, you just select it, and here you have the override button. So here you simply apply all. It didn't click, I clicked on the side. We apply all, and that's done. And what it, this is going to do, it's of course going to uh, override the current prefab, so the changes are going to be saved here. And the next time you um, go to the main menu and in game, it's going to be automatically um, using this new version for you. Because uh, as you can see here, if I press play, let me show you the main menu manager component here. You see that we have a RPG Builder Essentials reference, and this is referencing to the prefab here. So when you enter the game in the main menu, here in the R key, you're going to see that we have a don't destroy unload uh, part here. And this contains the RPG Builder prefab we just looked into. And this is the game UI used uh, when you enter the game and so on. So that's pretty much it. Here I want to show you a quick example of uh, another project I'm working on the side, um, which I'm going to be using to um, make, basically use RPG Builder as a user. And as you can see here, I duplicated as uh, a prefab, the custom prefab, I mean the essential prefab, my bad, and I made a custom one. The reason for that is because when you uh, when you're going to update RPG Builder, for example, to version 1.0.2, um, you're going to want to uh, split those essential prefab. Otherwise, this one is going to get overridden by uh, the update, and all your chances are going to be gone. So, obviously, keep a backup of your project always. But if you do make a separated prefab, none of uh, this is going to affect the second one. So all your colors, your uh, UI in general is not going to be affected. And here, as you can see, I started making changes for, um, for this uh, project. So it's using a completely different UI pack. Uh, it's, by the way, from um, Ponetti. It's uh, the classic uh, RPG UI pack. It's very good. So uh, link in the description to his uh, store. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I started changing, you know, for example, the uh, HUD, the toolbars, all of that is very easy. Um, there is no like perfect or like very quick way to do that. Personally, I just go there and change things mostly one by one. You can write some kind of tools to make things uh, easier when you want to like mass modify some images or some fonts. Uh, I can help you with that, actually, if you're interested in those uh, UI tools to make things a bit faster. I could include that maybe in RPG Builder, but uh, yeah, ba mostly you just uh, go one by one. For example, you open a window, let's say the uh, talent trees, and uh, you, you open it and you just change one by one those backgrounds, those buttons, scroll bars, and so on. So that's it. Let me know if you have any question. Don't forget to save your changes by overriding the prefab when you're done. And um, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, all you have to know for RPG Builder UI and how to tweak it. You have access to everything, so there is no limitation. Just uh, keep in mind that whenever uh, RPG Builder gets updated, you might have to merge uh, what's new. For example, if I add a new panel in the RPG Builder Essentials and you're using your custom version, your custom version is not going to have this custom panel. So you might just have to copy and paste it there and so on. I'm going to make this process as easy as possible anyway, obviously. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.